Hi, let's take a look at some of the best practices to keep in mind when creating applications in Caspio. To begin, you want to avoid creating your applications directly inside the All Assets container. The All Assets container is a repository that includes all of the objects across all of the applications in one place. Instead, what you want to do is create a new application for each new project. You can start developing your application by either importing existing data from Excel or Access Database, or you can begin from a blank template. After giving your application a name, you should be able to see the newly created container for that specific application. It's important to note that at this point, this is still just a container for your application. You will still need to open the application in order to access the essential building blocks in the panel to the left. You will use these objects to create your application. Your starting point for building applications should always be the tables. Tables are the foundation of any app that you create and that's where all of your data will reside. Each table that you create will consist of one or more fields. And for each field that you create, you'll be able to choose a specific data type depending on what type of data you want to store inside the field. Let's take a look at this context table for example. At the very top, I have a unique field. And I chose a data type called random ID, which is a randomly generated ID that gets assigned to each of the contacts. You have other ID data type options as well, but for a more secure and longer ID type, we recommend using either a random ID or a GUID, which is a global unique identifier. In a database application, this is also referred to as a primary key. It is used to uniquely identify each row in the table. We recommend that you move your primary key at the very top of the list for each table that you create. Your tables could have other fields such as phone, email, and other short answer type fields. Any field that doesn't require a lot of text, we recommend using a text 255 data type. For fields that do require more input, such as description, comments, and others, we recommend using text 64,000. For numerical data, if you plan on storing whole numbers, integer will make the most sense. If you plan on storing decimals and digits after the decimal, the number data type will be the best choice. If you plan on storing money values in any currency, then we suggest the currency data type. Numeric values that aren't used as straight numbers, such as zip codes, phone numbers, and social security numbers should always use a text 255 data type. For password fields, you should always use a special data type called password to ensure that your passwords are fully encrypted and never exposed within your account or via an app user interface. Caspio offers many capabilities for your password fields in your applications such as users' ability to reset them if lost, requiring confirmation when set, and requiring the old password when updated. As best practice, you should always include a date submitted and date updated fields to all of your tables and set their data type to a timestamp with an appropriate option of either stamp on insert or stamp on update. Formula data types can be used to perform automatic computations and can even support basic SQL expressions. For fields that require multiple checkboxes options, you can use the list string data type and set your checkbox values on the right side. To ensure that all of your labels are uniform across your entire application, we recommend that you use the label field to assign a default label for each field. As for your field names, because you're limited to how many characters you can have, try to use meaningful names as much as possible. When naming your tables, we always recommend you use the same abbreviation at the beginning of the name so that you can easily locate and export your files at a later time. In this example, you can see that I use PM at the beginning, which is short for project management. Since Caspio uses a traditional database environment, it's important to normalize your data from the very start. Normalization is a process by which large tables are divided into smaller tables and joined together using primary keys and foreign keys. Doing so provides many benefits to your applications, such as data accuracy, where data is stored just once and eliminates redundant data, easy to categorize and store data that can later be queried and filtered to extract specific information, scalability by adding additional tables without having to modify existing applications, and many, many more. If your data is relational and you need to link, let's say, contacts to projects, you will need to create a projects table. For example, if each contact needs to be linked to many projects, inside the projects table, you will need to have a field that will stamp the contact ID. The contact ID field inside a projects table is called a foreign key. A foreign key will be used to store the primary key of another table. 
To make a formal connection between the two tables, we will make use of the relationship screen. Here we can include both tables and simply connect them using the primary key from the contacts table to the foreign key in the projects table. Caspi will automatically detect the type of relationship between the two tables. When using referential integrity, your records are protected from accidental deletion or incorrect updates. In most cases, we recommend enforcing referential integrity so you don't create orphan records in your related tables. Also, you can use the relationships to turn related field in the child table a dropdown of valid choices from the parent table. And you can also apply this to your data pages as well. Here are some other noteworthy examples. Patients to visits, tasks to projects, customers to orders. These are all examples of one-to-many relationships, which will require two tables. In Caspio, you can also set up many-to-many -many relationships by linking a third table. In this example, we have a table of patients, table of doctors, and a table of visits that stamps the doctor ID and the patient ID inside a joining table between them. This makes it possible for doctors to see many patients and for patients to see many doctors. To optimize your applications for consistency and performance, we recommend using lookup tables. Lookup tables are simple tables used to populate options in dropdowns, radio buttons, and list boxes. You can also use lookup tables when creating complex cascading options to help users complete the forms much faster. It's also helpful to create headings throughout the form to group fields, which helps organize the form and help the user navigate the form. You'll accomplish this by inserting HTML blocks inside a data page wizard and customizing the headings using the toolbar right above. When building your reports, try to keep your search forms short. Long and complex search forms can be confusing and providing too many options is more likely to return zero results. It's best to provide a simple search as default and if needed, offer an advanced search form separately for people who really need more filtering options. On the results page, it's always helpful to limit the number of records per page. We recommend displaying 25 to 50 records per page since a higher number of records per page can take longer to load. To do so, navigate to the search results options in the data page wizard and change the records per page. If you're using a tabular report, it's recommended that you try to keep the field columns to 10 or less and then let the users drill down to the details page to view more information. If your applications contain large amount of text, we recommend placing text 64,000 fields on the details page rather than the results page. If you want them in the results page, then consider enabling the truncate feature. If you need your end users to edit records in the results page or details page, either using an inline edit, bulk edit, or details page, you can do so by enabling our editing options inside a data page wizard. If you need to use more than one data source for your reports, meaning you need to see fields from more than one table, we recommend using views. Views allow you to join up to 16 tables when there is a common value between them. You'll want to join your tables using a primary key and a foreign key in order to group all the fields in one view. Views are especially helpful in a relational database when working with one-to-many and many-to-many -many relationships. Views also allow you to filter data from your tables using drag and drop elements. By configuring the filtering options correctly, you'll have more flexibility in terms of how you filter data from one or more tables. Lastly, views are often used in authentications to create role-based functionality for your applications. For example, while your employee table could contain all employees, different views can be created to limit employees per department and authentication based on such a view limits access to members of that specific department. When it comes to deploying your applications to the web, we recommend using the embed deployment method, which seamlessly deploys the forms and reports into your own web pages. When your applications are embedded in your website, it's easy to continue tweaking different elements of your applications to improve the user experience. When you make an update to your data page inside Caspio, that update is immediately available once you refresh the browser without having to redeploy the embed code. If you don't have a website, you can still deploy your application using Caspio's direct URL deployment method. Thank you for watching our video on some of Caspio's best practices. Incorporating some of these best practices with your applications is entirely up to you and your specific use case. So have fun working on your projects and don't hesitate to contact us if you have any questions.